Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasan and today we're going to discuss the model of your lower limb. So as you can see this is the thigh part of the lower limb, this is the leg and this is the foot. So whenever we look at the lower limb, first we have to familiarize ourselves with what is medial and what is lateral. And the biggest indicator of that is your foot. The big toe of the foot indicates that this is the medial side and the little toe indicates that there is this side is the lateral side. All right. So today we're going to discuss about the thigh. That's what we need to know. Let's begin with the anterior compartment of the thigh first. Overall, you can see this is where it's quite obvious since this is the knee joint. We know that this is the anterior compartment of the thigh. The anterior compartment of the thigh consists of the basic four muscles called the quadriceps. The quadriceps are highly visible right here. As you can see, these one, two, three and four, which lies beneath this muscle. And apart from these quadriceps femoris, there is a very important muscle in the anterior compartment, the sartorius, which is large ribbon-like muscle running all the way from hip bone to your knee. Another important structure that is in the anterior compartment of the thigh is the femoral triangle. You can see this small triangle here. So let's get started with labeling these muscles. Firstly, we have the most important muscle of the quadriceps femoris, which is the, forming the main belly, most obvious, rectus femoris. Just lateral to it is the vastus lateralis and medial to this is the vastus medialis. So a strong indicator of knowing what is vastus lateralis and medialis is sartorius. Always remember sartorius is going to be very medial. So just lateral to sartorius you can see will be the vastus medialis, the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis. If I remove rectus femoris, we can even visualize the vastus intermedius. The sartorius is very obvious. It's large and it goes all the way down. Overall, the anterior compartment of the thigh has a single nerve supply and that is derived by femoral nerve, which is right here. Let's talk a little about this area. This area is the femoral triangle. Its base is formed by the inguinal ligament. Its uh, medial wall is formed by the adductor longus. Its lateral wall is the sartorius. Its floor is formed medially by the adductor longus and the pectineus. The lateral part of the floor is formed by iliosuous muscle which is coming from the abdomen area. Then we have the apex. Apex is basically going to be at the point where the medial and lateral walls will meet. And just beneath or let's say deep to this apex is the adductor canal. So let's, let's discuss these vessels. The most medial vessel you can see is the femoral vein. Little lateral to it is the femoral artery and lateral to that is the femoral nerve. So it's quite obvious the most lateral structure is femoral nerve. So always remember in a model, the yellow is always going to be a nerve, red is going to be an artery and blue is going to be a vein. We all know that this structure is important because there are a couple of important anatomical structures right here. If you all remember, there is the femoral sheath covering the upper four centimeters of the vessel. We all remember the most medial compartment of the femoral sheath was the femoral canal. And we all remember this little area was the femoral ring, the base of the femoral canal. And we all know that the hernia was protruding, femoral hernia would protrude through here. So overall, we're discussing the gross, so let's not go into those microscopic details. Now let's go ahead and talk about the lateral side. Although the thigh is divided only into three compartments, the anterior, medial and posterior, the lateral side of your thigh consists of a modification of the deep fascia called the iliotibial tract. There are two muscles that insert into the iliotibial tract, the tensor fascia lata. So the first muscle you can see going inside this tract, this is the tensor fascia lata. And this muscle coming from the gluteal region and inserting into the tract, this is the gluteus maximus. Now let's go ahead and talk about the medial compartment of the thigh. Let's remove the sartorius out of the way so we can visualize better. When I remove the sartorius, we can see the adductor canal. This is the vastus medialis. And now let's talk about the muscles of the medial compartment. The medial compartment consists of muscles supplied by the obturator nerve. And these are the chief adductors of your thigh. And similar to their function are their names. The adductor longus, the gracilis, adductor magnus. This is the adductor magnus. This is the entire adductor magnus on, over which the gracilis lies. And there is another muscle called the adductor brevis, which is not visible on this model. So adductor longus, gracilis, and adductor magnus, either this or this adductor magnus. 
these are the muscles you can actually see in a model of the medial compartment you can see that the gracilis is going to go directly insert into the medial condyle of the tibia and just behind it will be the posterior compartments muscles the semitendinosus and membranosus and apart from that the sartorius is also going in inserting into the similar insertion area which means these are the sgs muscles this is the sartorius hence you should know that gracilis will come right behind it so this muscle is the gracilis this is the adductor longus now let's go ahead and talk about the posterior compartment so this is the posterior compartment of the thigh it's basically composed of the hamstrings muscles which are the chief flexors of the knee so these are the hamstring muscles they are basically consisting of the semitendinosus the semimembranosus and the biceps femoris how do you identify that always remember the muscles that are going to insert in the medial condyle which you will see with by looking at the foot so this is going into the medial condyle so you know that these are the semitendinosus and membranosus and semitendinosus will always be superficial to the semimembranosus this is because it's going to the lateral condyle so these are the biceps femoris so this is the long head of the biceps femoris and if i'm able to remove this here you can see the short head of the biceps femoris now let's discuss the gluteal region the first muscle you'll see in the gluteal region covering the entire gluteal region is the gluteus maximus let's remove this out of the way and visualize the structures that lie beneath it the next muscle that comes is the gluteus medius now we're going to talk about these muscles so this is the gluteus medius this muscle which is triangular in shape is the piriformis now this muscle is very important as a landmark because just below the piriformis comes out the sciatic nerve this large nerve is the sciatic nerve it goes and it's the chief nerve supply of the posterior compartment of the thigh so the sciatic nerve comes from below this muscle so this muscle is the piriformis so remember this muscle also this muscle is an indicator of the superior and inferior gluteal vessels so the vessel you see emerging from top of the piriformis is a superior gluteal artery if it's red it's artery so this is a superior gluteal artery and if it's coming from below is the inferior gluteal artery now the muscles that lie directly below the sciatic nerve are, are called collectively the triceps coxae these are the three muscles lying together and below the sciatic nerve the first muscle is the superior jamilus the last muscle is the inferior jamilus and between these two lies the obturator internus muscle and just below the triceps is the muscle that is quadratus shaped so this is the quadratus femoris now you can see the sciatic nerve goes all the way down and it splits into its two terminal branches these are the one that goes to the medial side is the tibial nerve and the one that goes to the lateral side is the common peroneal nerve and as you can see this is the popliteal fossa this area right here so putting the muscles back on you can see that this area this diamond shaped fossa is the popliteal fossa and this consists of as you can see the popliteal vein this is the tibial nerve and this is the common peroneal nerve which is going towards the lateral side it is on its way to the neck of the fibula which we'll study later in the leg so overall this is all you need to know about the thigh the anterior medial and posterior compartments along with the gluteal region for your model identification so thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on instagram